I did say it was gonna be like 77, but it's nice. Yeah, it is, dude. It's not humid. A little bit of raindrops coming too. I feel like. Said it so was... you just everywhere you go and you bring in the fabric around with you. Listen, you <laughs> it's me, like your leaning post, you told right? Don't carry it, so I'm. I'm, I'm just bringing it. it. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. First job with my new machine. We got it unloading everything off camera. Benny. Mas is here. No, he isn't. <laughs> you schmuck. Hey, man. First job with the new machine. Yep, you excited? Yeah, dude. Patio sitting wall. Are you excited? Mm. In the winter, we're going to be sitting right here. Yep, right there. That's the hand warmer. Hey, you guys got hand warmers? I certainly do. Yep. It's a diesel engine. But anyway, yeah. I'm amped up for the job, bro. We're going to be using different colors than we, like, ever use, too, dude. We're using some brown tones on this yep. one. Beat of butter chocolate. Mm-hmm. It's going to be nice. Let's walk you guys through the job. So we've got a sitting wall and patio going in here. It's always hard to tell on camera, but from this point right here, which is kind of like the corner of the patio, to over there is a 15 inch grade change. So instead of building the patio up to meet this grade, which is what a lot of contractors and people recommended that came in other than me uh, to the customers, but it would leave like a drop off on this side. And they got kids and they don't like the idea of maybe someone falling off of it like a step off of the patio so i recommended them that we lower the patio dig it down and then you would put a wall right here which you could just put a wall to retain the grade and it would be cheaper or in this situation if you want to spend a little bit more money you make a double-sided uh, l-shaped sitting wall and that will retain the grade keep the patio at the the low grade so there's no drop off and um, it's going to be a good place to hang out. You'll be able to get a good eight eight people or so that could sit on it. And then the patio is going to come out. And it's going to kind of curve around into those steps. So the first thing we're going to do is go through this area and just get up as much of this decorative stone as possible and put it to the side. I don't want to just dig it up and mix, mix it in with soil. And I believe there's also some landscape fabric underneath. So we're going to separate all that, expose the, the soil in the area. Uh, mark our area out with some paint and then we'll get into digging. You excited bud? Very excited. Nice. Back to hardscaping. Back to hardscaping, yep. Done landscaping and carpentry. Yep, all done. <laughs> Doing the towel. Yep. Gotta get done before and after this pal. Or were you ever here? Another thing I really like about this machine is it doesn't have a pull down bar. Although I'll be honest, I've caught myself putting my hands up in the air for no reason. I'm just sitting here going like this, trying to find the bar. So I was mentioning this in the video that I made when I got this, when I got it delivered that this is a, a lighter machine um, in the construction realm, I guess. It's an 8,500 pound machine. So it's just a little bit more of a light footprint. And when you turn and um, on rocks and everything like that, it makes, it kind of causes less damage than a heavier machine. And uh, that's that's kind of what I was looking for. I'm always in a residential setting in, in the work that I do. So I, as the lighter footprint, the better in my opinion. So there's less damage to fix. This will pick up anything that I need it to pick up. A full pallet of pavers, no problem. quick that quick release is super quick I know everything works great when it's new but we'll see how it how it goes the more we use it
about getting out, but now you're already halfway. What? <laughs> so I was thinking about. <laughs> Yeah, I thought about it, but then I realized this machine is very comfortable. Listen, if Liz ever kicked me out of the house, I got a place to stay, dude. Can you plug your phone in? There's got to be, dude. Come on. I don't see one. Oh, right there. Right by your... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bro, if I was literally just like this, man... All set. On a nice day, dude, you got your stoop, your porch, and your bed all in the same spot. Bro, this is unbelievable. Like, if I had a pillow, two pillows. Two pillows. I need one for under my legs right here. Yeah. And then one for behind my head, bro. And I'm styling. I don't need a blanket. Turn the heat on if I get cold. <laughs> want something to snuggle. Oh my gosh, bro. This is wild. Cheesing. Looking back, bro, I probably could have got out and helped you with that bucket. I'm sorry. Talk too much. I do. All right, we got a couple stockpiles of the stone, or the cleanest stone on each side. Now we found the fabric. So we're pretty much just gonna go a little bit further than where we want to be. And if it's like to a point where it's still connected, we'll just cut it. fabric out of the way all the stone that was really dirty we just left it in the middle and I'm about to pick it up I'm gonna get that stone and a few buckets of dirt load up the dump trailer and we're gonna go dump it Not gonna lie to you guys, got so excited about using my machine, I forgot I had stuff in here. Nice. Didn't hit it. Bro, I'm pretty happy with it. What? I was just going to tell you, dude, I'm pretty happy that I don't because even with that lip and being so far back, bro, that's dead center, man. Yeah, it is. Or, well, maybe, maybe it gets four more. inches off to the center, but... And you could probably still go much higher, too. Yeah. If I, well, if I was on flat ground, dude, it's this oh, lip. Yeah, yeah. I can't get completely close to it, but, you know, that's another big thing, bro, is if I didn't have this machine, I wouldn't have rented a skid steer, bro. I would have rented a mini skid steer because the, the price difference for a week rental is out of control, mm. you know? So I would just sacrifice and get the mini skid. Yep, add a couple of days to the job. You know? Or if I was tired, <laughs> I would rent the, rent the skid steer and just pay a freaking premium price. One rental payment, I know we've talked about it, but the camera's on. One rental payment, one week rental payment for a skid steer is a monthly payment for a brand new skid steer. So, obviously it's a no-brainer, but the thing is that's hard is getting yourself to a point where the bank's gonna let you buy a skid steer buy like that. Like that. <laughs> $76,000, you know what I mean? Like, but we're here, bud. I'm here to make your life easier, bud. Okay? The less struggle I gotta put you through in the day, 
good day. The more productive you can be. <laughs> That's right. up that machine loaded everything very center on the trailer looks good very sandy soil back there mostly sand to be honest but you can see that's really close to center maybe a few inches back but that's beautiful I'm actually bringing this to my house it's about 25 minutes away there is a place that's closer but it's like 10 minutes closer and I'd have to pay to get rid of it so I'm just gonna take it to my house grab some stone come on back come on back now Ben come on back now Red Bull number two bud Three. dude the guy I went and met with last night yeah it's a patio on the lake speaking of the lake that that lake kind of reminded me of it and this Red Bull did but um this guy is a viewer of the channel and we were just talking and stuff beautiful little cabin dude they fixed it all up but he's telling me watching the videos and stuff and we were inside and he's like yep don't worry we're gonna have this fridge full of red bulls for you and ben <laughs> dude, I, was, I was like that's awesome red bull's gonna be our first lawsuit <laughs> dumped and he just did that while I was inside doing a couple things now we're had to get some three-quarter stone back to the job can you get some stone Benny boy ready isn't just like your favorite thing to do huh I love it <laughs> I, love, I love watching him dump the bucket <laughs> so much fun let's film them they always feel comfortable when they do the film Bro, they've literally been telling us for a week now that this day was gonna be horrible. Don't even go outdoors. Yeah, don't even go. <laughs> it's beautiful out. We're back, Benny. Huh? We're back. Got all the pavers and wall block while we were gone. This is uh, family's property. They have a little bit of three quarter stone here now. So we're gonna have the stockpile right here. The way it's less mess to pick up. Whatever's left on the ground, we'll just smooth out and it can stay there. something to get it started we're pretty close down here bro because we're the backfill is gonna be like maybe an inch or two lower than where we are now so we're pretty much going off of that grade at a slight slope up towards that corner so yeah that's gonna be the high point it's gonna fade both ways so we still got some digging to do before we find the rough grade Got all our material, like I said. We got two pallets of wall blocks, wall block cap, border pavers, and then the main pavers. We're probably not using a full three pallets, but it's easier to order them like that and then return however many layers you need to return. 
he did a good job setting those in place. He always does a good job. I always forget about this magnetic mount here. Works out good for the top of machines, but not all of them are set up really good for you to find a nice spot. Kubota's got a nice flat top there that's, that's solid steel. So this holds on nicely. We'll see, see how that works. Alright, we got our third and final load of fill all set. I did that off camera. It gets a little repetitive. Benny! Que paso, muchacho? Man, that's a pretty machine. You guys are going to be hearing that for the next couple months. <laughs> got down to our sub, sub base height. We got some string set up. So that string is top of paver, and it's gonna be one step down from that bottom step. It's a seven inch step from there. And we have this line set up to pitch from that highest point down to here. Slightly more than an eighth of a slope. And we're gonna be doing that this way as well. So that back corner is going to be the highest point of this patio. Everything's going to slope this way and this way. So down here is our deepest excavation point. Down to about 11 inches. 11 and a half. Ten and a half. Ten. And then we get up to about nine there. Which nine inches is just fine. We usually go between the eight and ten range. And if you go a little bit more, it's going to do nothing but help. So everything's good. We checked it that way with the screed. So our subsoil is at a perfect height. And what we need to do now is what you've probably seen on a lot of our... Uh, video. So we're going to lay out a thin thin layer of three-quarter inch stone Compact it into the subsoil to strengthen it up nice. You ready for that, bro? Ready, bro. Do it real quick before our size frying it. It's coming, bro Oh my gosh We're not in Kansas anymore, Benny no. <laughs> Hey, what'd you want to be when you grew up? <coughs> A gamer. <laughs> A gamer. <coughs> Killing me with the second hand. Hey, easy now. Alright, bud. Careful. Put your gain up. Time to backfill.
the <laughs> <laughs> rough grade, <laughs> rough graded and uh, well dug. <laughs> <laughs> rough graded and well dug. That's right. With our salt and pepper on top. Got our thin layer spread. Time to compact. Fire that thing up, boy. I don't want to say that. Cut. <laughs> hey man, fire that up. <laughs> hey, let that thing fire, man. Fire it up. Go ahead, start it. There goes Benny. There he goes. What's up, um, bud? Not much. Just chilling here. Beautiful Thursday morning. It is a beautiful Thursday morning. It poured yesterday. Everything's wet. Hey, these guys haven't seen you in a while since the competition. I know. It's been a long time. Yep. Long time. That was back in March, but and it's now, now June. Almost three months ago. Oh well, they'll be seeing me a lot more. Look at that bad Larry, huh? I've got to feature this thing on YouTube. <laughs> He's like, you're damn right you do. Wow. Looks even better on GoPro. Does it? She is a beaut. Yeah. He might have, or he might not have, lost his entire exhaust on the way home the other day. When he fires it up later, we'll let you guys decide. <laughs> Listen, sounds better without it. It looks good though. You gonna give these guys the details of it? All right, 91 Jeep YJ, four inch rough country lift, 35 mud boggies with a 5.3 LS swapped into it. Bang, bang. That's all the information. Other than it being an NV3500 tranny. Okay, he's like, I got some more info for you. Listen here, I got factuals. No, it's really nice. There's always a few minor things wrong with these these Jeeps, but a few. That thing's solid. That's you know what I mean? Obviously somebody customized it. I don't think quite it was, a bit. I don't think it was solid. <laughs> I don't think it's solid when you're driving behind me and my exhaust just goes <laughs> gone. Oh man. Sweet. Cool. You ready to get to work? Oh yeah. I'm trying to get a thumbnail, dude. You gotta be the thumbnail, I guess. Whoa, whoa, I'm the thumbnail. <laughs> it's possible. I got a bunch of different ideas. It might be you in the Jeep. It might be you in front of the machine. I don't know. It might just have to be the Jeep next to the machine. That'd be cool. Get a little photo shoot with the machine and the Jeep next to each other. I'll put the forks on and pick it up. <laughs> you probably could. Oh, I could definitely pick that up. We'll just do a whistling diesel, dude. I'll just destroy your Jeep with the, with the Kubota. Maybe once I get, like, really successful on YouTube, I'll buy it from you just to destroy it, and we'll make the Whoa. video. And then Whoa. you can get the money from the video. I ain't liking that idea too much, you know that? I'll buy the Jeep, and you can get the money from the video. What do you think? Yeah, but that means I won't have the Jeep anymore. <laughs> I know. I, I would never do that. It. I wouldn't want you to do that. I mean, whistling diesel is cool and all, but he is really destroying a lot of like nice trucks that were made from generations ago. Those seventies F one hundreds, F two fifty high boys. I get to cry. I cry yeah. every time I see it. Like it's kind of disrespectful to the generation that built all those because they did too. Our fathers and our grandfathers, they built those trucks. And they made some mean trucks. And they're beautiful, and you can't go rebuild those. You can. It's just forty grand. Yep. No, I mean like like one that's in mint condition that he destroys. You can't go back no. and just rebuild that. No, because it's it's crumbled. Yeah, it's done. There's nothing left. It's on fire. Yep. It's gone. Done. The only thing I do like about it, 
So you got rid of those squatted trucks. Mm. Yeah, those those ones need to go. <laughs> some of them need to go, some but some of the better. older ones, no. Like the early 2000s trucks, go ahead, destroy those things all you want. Cat eye shed. I don't think there was any like early 2000s trucks that I'd really want to save. Just for looks. I know the engines and the power and everything, but just looks wise, I'm talking about the OBS freaking, you know, Fords. 250s, 350s. That are just beautiful looking. 460 big block. Yep. Warner T4. <laughs> You know what I'm gonna love about like this this whole like video is that you just everywhere you go and you bring in the fabric around with you. Listen, you <laughs> it's me, like you're leaning post, you told right? Me carry it, so I'm, I'm, I'm just carrying it <laughs> everywhere I go. People want to know why do I have this fabric? <laughs> All right, bud, let's get into it. We uh, he he compacted this once yesterday and it started pouring, which is actually a good thing because the water will help with compaction. But we're gonna get that compacted fire compactor fired up and run around this a couple more times to make sure it's nice and stiff. So once I get the compactor running, I think I'm gonna have you run it. So let me set up the camera and we'll do that. It's nice to have Richie here. He just graduated high school. He's been out of school for a couple weeks now, so that's gonna be awesome. He's gonna him and his brother Travis. You guys have seen him. They're gonna be working with us during the summer here. And uh, maybe Richie through the fall and everything. We'll see, pretty excited for it. I bought a new tamper. My other one I'm using as a tripod over there. But the handle's get, uh, broken. It's gonna break pretty soon. I think it's good. Looks pretty good. All right, this is nice and tight now. We're gonna lay some fabric out, bud, and start backfilling. Some of the fabrics have like a solid piece of cardboard in the middle yeah so that it unrolls easy they don't put that in this one they just roll up the fabric so it's like super hard to unroll it it's the little things <laughs> it's all about the little things oh I got a knife buddy thank you uh, if you could though you want to get onto that side we got to go up the up the hill a little bit okay I want to just step down in on the corner there, and then I'll dump the stone on this. Fire up the Kubota. Wait till you hear the backup beeper. Beep. No, it's loud. Is it? I got to figure out something. go grab some more stone if you want to roll this out you want to roll it out with like five five inches or so of overhang okay. and we're gonna end up putting this one over that one you know what I mean yeah all right I'll be right back I just can't even explain how good it felt to have a machine that is my own on a job site. It's been a long time coming. I've been working really hard for many years to get myself to a point where I could purchase a machine like this. And it just tasted so good this day. I was like on cloud nine. And having my nephew there was a great addition as well. This job was honestly, it wasn't a huge job, but it was definitely top five favorite projects of this year so far 
And the, the job site itself was just a blast. Me, Ben, Richie, and you're also going to see Travis was on this job site as well. So nice four-man crew. We got in and out quick and efficient, and we all had a lot of fun. And I just um, I can't say how smooth this machine is. Every, every movement is just really smooth and flawless. I have no big complaints other than how loud the backup beeper is on the machine. And I say this um, as of September 18th. I've used this machine for months now, and I honestly have no complaints about it. It's just, um, it's just such a nice machine. What are you doing over there? You sitting on the job? Hey, listen. <laughs> Pay me to do this, all right? Yeah. He's like, hey, joke's on you. You're paying me to sit. You told me to sit in here. <laughs> so I won't even play those games. Guys, sit up again and drop on that air ride for the viewers. All right. Ready? Oh yeah, that's, that's got to be my favorite part about it because I've ridden in some really stiff seats and skid steers and they can throw you around. What are you splurging up in here? You got air conditioning? <laughs> Is it, yeah, AC. Ooh. That AC heat's pretty standard. I didn't really get any like extra things. I didn't get no backup cameras or. You don't really need it. No. All the basics. Unless you got like two-year-olds running around. <laughs> yeah. Well, even then, though, that backup horn is going to... I don't think anyone's going to stand behind this machine when that's going off. That's literally the only thing I'm not liking about the machine is how loud that backup horn is. So I'm going to have to find something, figure out some way to quiet it down a little bit. How's your regular horn? Um, I think it's kind of annoying, too. Try it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's really loud. Yeah. <laughs> Get a couple rags and just... Yeah, cover it up a little. So you like it in there? Oh, I like it. That's good. I'm surprised you don't have foot controls for everything too. I don't like foot controls. I don't know if I don't think about offers them, but I don't like them. I don't know. I like foot controls a little bit more. I used to use them a lot, but back in the day, I don't have too good of hand coordination to do it. But you get used to it quick, though. Yeah. And then you're chilling. You're not like you know messing with your feet or anything. So we got some rough grading to do. The depth that we have, we're gonna compact in a couple lifts. So we're gonna rake this out a little, compact it, and then get to the correct height. Compact it again, and we'll be ready to screed. Waiting on Benny. Joy riding. Joy riding. So we got half the patio to our first lift. Benny's firing up the compactor. So we can compact it, and then we're gonna get it to our proper height. Break it out good, compact it again. So in the lowest areas, we were at about 11 inches. So we want to do that in a couple lifts with this backfill, which is what we're doing now. We got this rough graded to about 3 inches, 2 inches in some places, lower than where it needs to be and we're compacting it so that we can put another lift, get it to the right height, and then compact it again. After we compact the first lift, what we wanna do is use our marking paint to roughly lay out where the edge of our patio is gonna be so that as we're raking, we can kinda of see exactly where we have to rake to. And that marking paint is very helpful for that and a lot of other things. Just just being able to visualize it with that paint on the ground is very helpful in the long run. I pretty much never use lasers or transit to get my grading proper with the base stone. All I'm doing is just going by eye and I'm going to get to a certain point where I use my screed rails and I'm going to lay it on the stone that I've been raking out to check that my, my slopes are correct. After a lot of installs doing this for many, many years, you know, you can really see by eye or get really close by eye all your slopes and then double check with your screed rails instead of having to set up a bunch of lasers and other, other things to check your grades. I will point to thou. Sometimes I wonder if Ben gets sick of me. Keep coming.
grade it out or grade it out. we're gonna make sure we're graded out i guess <laughs> hopefully. hopefully yeah that's the thing right there and hey dude you look really good next to that machine man i don't know if you make the machine look better or the machine makes you look better sure. yeah maybe hey maybe the next colors are orange imagine orange like that yep. high vis <laughs> Get us some hats with the stripes on it. Yeah, the reflective tape. Yeah, yeah, the reflective tape. <laughs> we got belts, you know, that we can wrap, you can reflective belts. Really? Yeah. No kidding. Hey, how about visors? <laughs> visors, mandatory, mandatory with the outfit, dude. I don't think Travis would be very happy with that. You think Trav would go on strike? Oh, he would. Yeah. He just he'd just show up and not wear it and be like, what do you want, dude? This is America. He'd take a leave of absence. <laughs> No, I think he'd just still come in and be like, I'm sorry. And yeah. you can't fire me for this or I'll sue you. <laughs> yeah, with dress code violation, so technically. Yeah, but I'd have to fight it in court, and I'm kind of worried to, to fight him in court. He's a smart kid. All right, well, we got everything raked to rough grade off camera, or at least we're going to check it now. And I wanted to walk you through how we check this. So... In this whole patio, our benchmark is obviously these steps down from the porch. And um, we just laid out these pipes right here where they fit for the level. Now we're gonna check where they are for level or how they're sloped. And that's how we find out if our rough grade is good. You can use a transit laser, use your lasers, string lines. But once you've done multiple patios and walkways and stuff, you kind of know where your stone needs to be sloped just by eye because you've done it so many times. So that's what that's what we do. We just kind of get it close by eye, check it with the pipes. If the pipes show that it's a little too high or it's a little too low, we'll pick the pipes up, rake it a little bit more, or add some more stone where necessary, check it again with the pipes. And if we look good, nothing's sticking up too high, we can just move on and we're going to be ready to compact and then start screeding it. You think we're looking pretty good? Or you think we're going to have to fix some stuff? I don't know. I think we're looking pretty good. We'll see. So once you lay the pipes down after you've raked, you really want to kind of set them in so that it's a true measurement. Okay, you can see we got our eighth of a slope right there. from that pipe, which should be the bottom of the paver, to the top of the step is nine and a half. So we're gonna be having two and three eighths of an inch of a paver. So it's gonna be just over seven inches is gonna be the step. And that's so that we can copy what's there now. It's about a seven and a quarter inch step. <coughs> so that's where we're gonna be. That's our baseline. So that corner right there is where we start. Pitch is good this way. Now we gotta make sure our pitch is good this way. Which it is. We got a little bit more than an eighth. So does that. And again an eighth. So these two pipes slope that way and this way. Good to go. Now we gotta check this one. It's good, eighth of a slope. So those three rails are good. We're obviously gonna be pulling them up because we have to compact this, but we know that the three quarter is good enough to be compacted. That's the purpose of this. <clears throat> That's the purpose, Ben. Purpose. You have purpose, purpose in life. So now we're gonna check from here to there. So now that we know this is good, both ways, all we gotta do is check left to right, really. That's 
perfect. Needs to be lifted up probably about a quarter of an inch. If you guys can see that, where we are here, we need to lift it up about a half an inch over there at the most. So we can do that with chip stone. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not good. Now, if this bubble was really buried the other way, you would probably have to put more three quarter, but because it's just a slight change, we're gonna use the chip stone to do that. And now we're back to even, that's even right there, but again, it's just a slight lift up on the pipe. So you wanna use chipstone, because if you use three quarter, you end up going too much, and it sticks through your chipstone when you're screeding. That's always fun, right, Ben? Oh, yeah, like three quarter starts sticking through your, your chip, dude. <laughs> hey. All right, Richie. This whole area is good, bud, so if you can take these pipes back out and just push them off to the side or just somewhere out of the way. And then, Benny, you want to start compacting that area? Seven, but it's nice. Yeah, it is, dude. It's not humid. A little bit of raindrops coming too. I feel like it said it was raining. Feels good. Oh well. Huh. Little rain ain't never killed nobody. No. Little rain never killed nobody. A lot of rain has. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> not a little bit. Well, yeah. We are back, filled, compacted, ready to screed and lay pavers. Good work, boys. Hey, do you think Travis is going to say my machine is yellow or orange? Dude, I think he's going to say it's yellow. Compact is yellow. Compact is yellow. <laughs> hey, don't leave the Oh, that's the rain. Sun. That's the same color as the bucket. Hey, rain's coming, guys. We're back, filled. We are good to lay pavers. That's another video. Hope you like this one. Say goodbye. Quick, Bye. everyone under the deck. Adios. <laughs> Hit the deck. You know the deal. Till the next video, God bless. Peace. Bless you.